Used to keep it cool, used to be a fool All about the bounce in my step Watch it on the news, what you gonna do? I could hear... I'm sure you have all heard of the term calorie before. Low calorie diets, high calorie diets, calorie this, calorie that. But do you actually know what a calorie is? A calorie is a unit of measurement, but it doesn't measure a weight or a length. A calorie is a unit of energy. When you hear someone say that something, ha something contains 100 calories, it is a way of describing how much energy that your body would be getting from eating or drinking that substance. Every food and every drink we consume, except for water, contains a certain amount of calories, which means it is going to give your body a certain amount of energy. All the food that, we that you consume on a daily basis is all made up of calories, and all the food that you consume on a daily basis is added up to a total, which is called your daily calorie intake. Your daily calorie intake is calculated on a daily basis, and this is the unit of measurement that determines whether you gain weight or whether you lose weight for that given day. If you are consuming more calories than your body burns on a daily basis, you will gain weight. If you are consuming less calories than what your body burns on a daily basis, you will lose weight. If you are new to the calorie world, most people think calories are a bad thing and they are not good for you. That is incorrect. Calories are not bad for you at all. Your body needs calories for energy, but eating too many calories or, or too many of the wrong types of calories and not burning enough of them off through exercise or through your training regime will lead to you gaining weight very fast. Almost all foods and drinks contain calories. Some foods, such as lettuce, contain very little calories. 100 grams of shredded lettuce has less than 10 calories. Other foods, like white rice, which is a high GI carbohydrate, contains a lot of ca calories. 100 grams of uncooked white rice is approximately 350 calories. You can find out how many calories are in items of food by looking on the nutrition facts on the back of the label. You can find out how many calories are in a certain item of food by looking at the nutrition facts on the back of the label. I also use an app called MyFitnessPal, which allows you to just type the food and the weight of the food into the app, or scan the barcode, and it will tell you the amount of calories in that item. Now, when you go even deeper into, into the calorie world, you will come across the term macronutrients. Macronutrients are used for energy, growth, and bodily functions by organisms. Depending on the activity level of the individual or what your training goals may be, these macronutrients are needed in small amounts or larger amounts. Macronutrients are the key in the bodybuilding world when it comes, when it comes to dieting to build muscle and to drop body fat. There are three macronutrients required and consumed by humans and they are protein, carbs and fats. Each of these macronutrients provides energy in different forms of calories. So what that means is that the three different kind of macronutrients, when eaten all together, total up to be a certain amount of calories which will equal your, your daily calorie intake. For example, in carbohydrates there are four calories per gram of carbohydrates that you consume. In protein, there are four calories per gram of protein that you consume. And in fats, there are nine calories per gram of fat that you consume. So if you were to consume 10 grams of protein, that would add up to a total of 40 calories. If you were to consume 10 grams of carbohydrates, that would also add up to 40 calories. And obviously, if you consumed 10 grams of fats, that would add up to 90 calories because fat contains nine calories per one gram of fat. I hope this makes sense. It is, a very, it is very simple once you, can, once you can get your head around it. Now I'm going to go over what a protein does, what a carb does, and what a fat does in terms of function in the body and how it affects your body composition, and then I'm going to explain how this is relevant in the bodybuilding world. So protein is a macronutrient that is essential to building muscle mass. It is commonly found in animal products which in the bodybuilding world we like to call lean meat. So things like chicken, turkey, tuna, beef, lamb, etc. And it can also be present in other sources of protein such as nuts, eggs and tofu. When protein is broken down in the body, it helps, it helps to form muscle mass. It helps the body recover and, is, and it also helps the immune system stay strong. Protein is the macronutrient that is going to help you stay full for longer and in terms of the way your body looks, protein is the number one macronutrient that is going to help your body build muscle and drop fat. 
A lot of research has also shown that protein is the number one macronutrient that helps repair and re rebuild broken down muscles. For those of us who, went to, who want to look good and for those of us who train hard, we need to consume more protein than what you normally would for a, for a normal person who doesn't train. Carbohydrates are made up of simple sugars that break down inside the body to create glucose. Glucose is moved around the body in the blood and is the primary source of energy for the brain, the muscles and other essential cells in the human body. There are two forms of carbohydrates. There are high GI carbohydrates and low GI carbohydrates and they both have a very different effect on the body and have a big effect when it comes to building muscle and dropping body fat. Low GI carbohydrates like sweet potato, brown rice, quinoa, etc. are a form of sustained energy and do not force the body to release a large amount of insulin when they are consumed. High GI carbohydrates like sugars, white rice or white potato release a large amount of insulin once they are consumed and do not provide long lasting energy like the low GI carbohydrates do. Once insulin is released in your body, put simply, it is like a key that unlocks or opens your muscles and fat cells. Once insulin is released into the body, your muscle cells and your fat cells open up and the nutrients that you are consuming get shuttled into those cells. As you can see, by spiking your insulin levels, it does, release the it does increase the chances of building muscle, but it does also increase the chance of putting on body fat, so it is very important that you are eating the right kind of carbs at the right times. So in terms of bodybuilding, you need to make sure that you have, your, you have either your oats or your brown rice or sweet potato meals before you train. Then you have your white rice or your white potato meals after you train. You have low GI carbs before you train because it gives you a slow release energy allowing you to train harder for longer and you have your high GI carbs after you train because it will spike your insulin levels and shuttle nutrients into the muscles maximizing growth and recovery. If you are eating all high GI carbohydrates all day your body will release too much insulin and most likely put on too much fat. If you are eating low GI carbs all day, you are not maximizing your muscle growth because you are not utilizing one of the most anabolic hormones called insulin to your advantage. So remember, always have your low GI carbs pre-workout and throughout the day and have your high GI carbs post-workout because of the insulin spike. Once again, a carb is not just a carb. They do have different effects on your body composition. Now onto fats. The two main types of fats we consume are saturated and unsaturated fats. Unsaturated fats are generally considered better for us than saturated fats. Unsaturated fats are foods like avocado, almonds, peanut butter, etc. And unsaturated fats come in food items like ice cream, donuts, fat from meats, butter, cheese, etc. The reason that unsaturated fats have a, have a better effect on our body is due to the molecular structure of the fat. Saturated fat forms regular shapes that clump together easily. Unsaturated fat forms irregular shapes that cannot clump together so easily. Saturated fat is therefore more likely to stick to the sides of the arteries and main organs and allow other saturated fat molecules to build up and this is gradually going to clog the arteries leading to high blood pressure and heart disease. Now this is obviously not a good thing. As I mentioned earlier, fats are very high in calories. Every gram of fat equals 9 calories. So you need to be very careful about not only the types of fat that you are consuming, but the amount of fat that you are consuming, because the calories do add up very fast and can lead to putting on excess weight. I know this sounds all very complicated, but this is what protein, carbs and fats are. This is what we need to take into consideration when we are dieting. But really, at the end of the day, you don't so much need to know what they do and all the scientific terminology I've just used. All you really need to do is to be aware of what you're consuming and how much you are consuming. Now, how this relates to us dieting to get into shape is probably just as complicated, but I'm going to do my best to explain it to you in its simplest form. So when we start a diet or decide to make the commitment to getting into shape, like I've mentioned in se several times in my other videos, you need to come up with a base diet and make regular changes to that base diet if you want to continue to keep making progress. If you want to build muscle, you will be increasing your carbs from your base diet at a rate that is necessary and when you are looking to drop fat, you are going to decrease the amount of carbs that you are going to be having at a rate that is also necessary. 
Now this is very hard for me to teach you as there is so many factors that contribute to putting together an accurate base diet. But I'm just going to give you an example or a rough guideline that you can follow without me actually having to do it for you as everyone is different. So when coming up with a base diet, you need to take into consideration your age, your height, your weight, your gender, your activity level, your work hours, your training regime, etc. There are a lot of things that you need to take into consideration. So what I'm about to tell you is not 100% accurate. It is not customised to you as an individual, but it is a rough guideline that you can follow if you want to do this by yourself. Make sure that you have an understanding of this. This is not 100% accurate because I'm hoping there are thousands of people watching these videos and I cannot explain to everyone or calculate for everyone personally. I can do that with my online coaching clients and this is what I do for them, but the process will stay the same for you. So in this video, I'm just teaching you the process. Please remember, this is just a rough idea and not 100% accurate for you. So when you start a cut for a male and a female, or you start a bulk, you have a base diet, which contains the same amount of calories. Yes, that is correct. When you are starting a bulk or a cut, your base diet starts exactly the same place and then goes off in a different direction as time goes by. When you are cutting, you are starting on a maximum amount of food and decreasing it as you go. When you are bulking you are building muscle and building muscle, you are starting on a minimum amount of food and increasing it as you go. For a female, at a rough guess, you should start on approximately 2,000 to 2,300 calories, depending on the factors I mentioned earlier. For a male, at a rough guess, you should start on approximately 2,800 to 3,200 calories for your base diet. If you are cutting, you cut the carbs on a weekly to fortnightly basis, like I teach you in my video, how to, how to lose fat through dieting correctly. And if you are trying to build muscle, you increase your carbs when you can, like I explained to do in my video, how to build muscle through dieting correctly. Now I hope so far you're keeping up and it's making sense. So for example, if you decide to start a bulk or a muscle building period, you start on 3,200 calories and from there you increase your carb intake as necessary, 3,200 calories would be your starting point. If you decided that you wanted to start cutting and focusing on getting leaner, you would also start on 3,200 calories, but from there you would decrease your carb intake on a weekly to fortnightly basis as required. 3,200 calories, again, would be the starting point. Now the base diet is calculated the same for a cut or a bulk, but, but, but depending which one that you are going for and what your training goals are, you would either increase your carb intake over time or you would decrease your carb intake over time. I'm going to make these calculations based on a person whose base diet is calculated at 3,200 calories and he's eating 7 meals a day. So of the 3,200 calories, I personally like to do a macronutrient breakdown of roughly 40% protein, 40% carbs, and 20% fats. So of the 3,200 calories you are consuming on a daily basis, that would equal to consuming 1,280 calories from protein, because that is 40% of 3,200 calories. 12,800, I mean 1,280 calories coming from carbs, because that is also 40% of 3,200 calories and approximately 640 calories coming from fat because that is 20% of 3,200 calories. So each gram of protein equals four calories. So 1,280 calories divided by four is 320 grams. So on a daily basis, you will be eating approximately 320 grams of protein. You will also be eating 320 grams of carbohydrates because 1,280 calories divided by four is also 320 grams. You will, be, you will be eating 72 grams of fats because 640 calories divided by 9 equals 72 grams. You then divide these amounts evenly across all your meals. You have protein in all 7 of your meals. So you divide 320 grams of protein by 7 and that equals about 40 to 45 grams of protein in all your meals. You have carbs in all 7 of your meals. So again, you divide 320 grams by 7 and you also have 40 to 45 grams of carbs in each of your meals. You have fat in only 2 of your meals. So you divide 72 grams by 2, by two because there's, there's 2 meals which equals 36 grams of good quality fats in 2 of your meals. And that is how you calculate your base diet. You divide the correct amounts into each meal and depending on what your goals are, you slowly decrease or increase your carb intake over time. 
I know that this is not accurate, accurate for everyone, this is just a guide. There are a lot of factors that you need to take into consideration when putting together a base diet. But as a rough guide, I am very confident if you tried this method and you used it correctly, you would see incredible results. Now I know it seems complicated, but if you do have a go at this by yourself, I want you to watch it a few times and write it down so you can see it in front of you because it really is simple once you understand it. The way that I learn everything that I know is by watching videos over and over again and writing stuff down. So make sure you put in the time and you put in the effort and you listen to it a few times and then you put it into practice. Please remember that this is just a guide. I'm just explaining it to you. I'm just explaining the correct process in calculating your base diet. Everyone is different. I cannot tell you accurately without actually knowing all of the factors that I mentioned earlier. This is just a guide, so you understand the process of how, of how macros fit into your diet when, when dropping fat and building muscle. To be perfectly honest, I actually hate all this stuff. It drives me crazy. I hate counting calories, I hate counting macros and reading labels 24-7, which is why I don't recommend you do it either. I do not count my macros after I have established my base diet. I don't get worried about it all because it is just quite stressful trying to monitor everything and having your macros perfect all the time. It really does create unnecessary stress. So once I come up with my base diet, I totally forget about macros and calories altogether. All I monitor is the amount of food that I'm consuming on a daily basis. You gradually cut your carb intake over time if you are trying to lose fat and you gradually increase your carb, carb intake over time if you are trying to build muscle. You just need to play around with the amount of food that you are eating in each meal. The macro breakdown, once calculated, does not matter. Please watch my other videos, how to lose fat through dieting correctly and how to build muscle through dieting correctly so that you have more of an understanding of how the process actually works and how you need to go about it. I know this is all very confusing and I've gone, gone on and on forever and ever and given you a heap of information. Now the information is very accurate. Everything I'm saying is correct, but I don't recommend being, being pedantic about it, counting your macros and monitoring, monitoring your calories. You don't need to do that. Establish your base diet, work out exactly how much food you'll be eating across all of your meals and then leave it at that. You then play around with the amount of food that you are eating. Increase your carbs as you go by adding in an extra 100 grams of sweet potato, for example, if you are trying to build muscle. If you are trying to drop fat, cut your carbs by decreasing 100 grams of sweet potato and increase your cardio as you go. The macros don't matter if you are increasing or decreasing the correct food. Do not obsess over macros as it is not an enjoyable way, way to live. I don't do it and I have gotten myself to where I am without it. I'm not at all saying I have the best physique in the world, but I believe that there is more to life than worrying about and, and obsessing over macros and calories. Spend your time learning about something more important. Learn about business. Learn about something you are passionate about. Set yourself up to be in a good position when you are ready to start a family. Whatever your situation is, I promise you you can find better things to do with your time than pull your hair out stressing over macros and calories. Establish the base diet. Do your calculations for that. Figure out how much food you need to be eating across all your meals and let your body get used to that amount of food for a few weeks. Once your body weight has stabilised on that amount of food, you can start adding carbs or cutting carbs based on your goals and then all you ever need to worry about is the amount of food that you are eating each meal and you don't have to spend your time worrying about stuff that you don't need to worry about. Now I apologise for the information overload. Feel free to watch over my videos as many times as you need to to get your head around it. I have done my best to explain and teach you how macros work and how they affect the body, but I don't want you to obsess over it. All you need to do is calculate your base diet and that's it. Train hard, eat well and enjoy life.